2021 Ford Bronco has a lot of tricks up his sleeves. And the tricks lie with the suspension. They say the Bronco could rock a baby to sleep and dance to music according to the uh, patents. And this is prior to the Bronco revealing. Matter of fact, the patents were introduced a while back and were discovered about April 14, 2020. Let's talk about that. Oh, by the way, there's a daredevil mode too. Now, the suspension can also, is also set up to do daredevil tricks. Can you believe that? Now, we're eagerly awaiting the new 2021 Ford Bronco, the resurrected 4x4, who had his reveal back in July. However, it was pushed back due to global events. But hey, the wait is over, and you know what? It's been worth it. So let's go digging and turn up some of these secrets about the Ford Bronco by looking at the uh, the patents that are presented by Ford Motors. Now we're not talking about uh, dredging up renderings, factory paint colors, roof design detail, transmission spec, leak photos, but a newly discovered patent has given us the latest morsel of the Bronco goodness. And this suggests that the new Ford SUV will have a very intricate terrain response system and a very active suspension setup. Now the Ford patent describes a complex mating of hardware and software that essentially links the Bronco, possibly it might be optional, electronically adjustable suspension system to a monitoring setup and believe it or not it's going to be tracking traffic weather terrain and even what kind of music you're listening to to determine a car optimal ride height and suspension behavior it works on the fly automatically and at the behest of the driver several parent driver selectable modes the system at least in a patent filing speak is called now check this out I might kill this word but anomaly 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 <laughs> I'm killing it sorry about that anomaly mitigation suspension mode and while it isn't assigned specifically to the Bronco there's almost no chance of it destined for any future Ford product not named Bronco Now we aren't sure if the AMSM is what this intricate setup will be called when or when it ever is officially launched. Now that stands for Anomaly Mitigation Suspension Mode. And it's only assigned to Broncos. Now, this is something else. Perhaps it's not coincidentally, but Ford also trademarked the term GOAT modes, which is described as driver systems comprised of automatic controls for vehicle chassis and powertrain controllers, integrated as an integral part of the passenger vehicle. While you might be familiar with GOATs, popular sports meaning greatest of all time, here it could well be a play of words pertaining to actual goats. As in goats are quite good at climbing and handling harsh terrain. Obviously, Ford trademark indicates an acronym, but for what it doesn't say, perhaps it means go on any terrain or get over any terrain. Now back in 1966, in that time period, the Bronco was known as the goat. And actually, it was going to be called, matter of fact, it was called Jeep. And it was used for um, offering off-terrain vehicles. But regardless of what, whatever it is ultimately called, it sounds as though the system is going to be almost 
all the time capable and changing a Bronco ride height depending on what kind of surface it's driving on. Suggesting whether you're on normal worlds, sand dune, the system will be finding ways to optimize ride height and suspension characteristics. The patent also mentions off-road specific features such as lowering only the nose when climbing a steep grade to give the driver a slightly better view forward rather than staring at the windshield full of sky. Now that's amazing. The Ford Bronco is just awesome folks. Let's dig into this uh, patent a little bit. We just had to look at some of the um just look at some of this um this Bronco and just to, just to salivate over it. But now let's look at the patent in detail. The only image offered in a patent is here. You see four wheels linked to a central control unit that controls the 2021 Bronco active suspension. I mean, you see here, here is the, uh, the wheel front right. Here's the actuators. And here right here is the, what's believed to be a control unit. And you see that it goes here and it gets back to the actuators and the control system is going both ways so it's going to the actuators to the control unit to the rear wheel and to the differentials and check this out now the patent says there are various targets that the Bronco system will use to determine what suspension mode it should be in think of a target as another word for variable these variables are constantly monitored feedback into the car's brain and the ride height is optimized accordingly now the targets include the type of terrain the car is on how much traffic there is around you the weather at your location what kind of fuel economy you're trying to achieve and which drive mode now separate from the suspension setting like say sport or eco that you're in This is something now. See how it's also connected to the brakes, to the actuators, to the control unit. This is just awesome. Now the 145, and this is the 144. So this is the 145 right here. And let's look at some of these other numbers. These are also control units, somehow, some way. Looks like it's connected to the, either the dampers or something of that sort. That the Bilsteins are, you know. But I guess it's also incorporated as a part of the host system, HOSS. It's just awesome, folks. You just look at this and gloat in the pet. Now, some are rather bland names and purposes, but. A few practicals jumped off this patent filing such as entertainment mode, music mode, and daredevil mode. No, we aren't making these up. Entertainment mode monitors the driver non-traditional inputs that determine which of the other two modes, music or daredevil, to activate. Now music mode will set or fluctuate the car's ride height to match whatever is coming out of your speakers. It sounds crazy, but it's real. But we can't be sure if this is the case. This might bump the vehicle around like the active suspension in the Mercedes-Benz GLE SUV. Now the intent there, other than having fun and showing off to your friends, is ultimately, or ultimately freeing the GLE if it were to be stuck. Deep sand, snow, jigging up and down. That is nice. You imagine being stuck in the mud and your Ford Bronco having a feature that causes it to move and shake like a dog 
shaking the water off and the wheels just moving man that sounds like that sounds awesome that sounds fantastic wow the four bronco is a beast the daredevil mode according to the patent claims the vehicle suspension height may be mapped to the target suspension height such as the such that vehicle can be driven on for example two or three wheels without overturning while it probably not for the willies or road use it's the ability to tilt the car over or on one side might actually prove useful for clearing narrow off-road obstacles or setting the tire perfectly on a boulder or even balancing a bronco if one of the more wheels lose purchase while transversing particularly egregious terrain. Now here are other suspension modes that we can think of. You have the uh, mobility, which is the avoidance, traffic, freight, and city mobility modes, which fall under the mobility umbrella. Then you have the avoidance, which adjusts to deliver quicker responses from the suspension. You have the traffic, which is basically a comfort mode, then you have the freight, which sounds like a load leveling, in which suspension accounts for the heavy cargo load that you might be pulling a trailer of some sort. And then you have the city mobility, which sets the vehicle up for aggressive driving. And you have the cooperative mode, which matches ride height to that of a nearby vehicle to facilitate transfer of cargo between them. You know, you know the more I think about this, the more I think that Ford may have not wanted this information to get out to, to his... Um, to the Jeep or other, or, uh, Jeep is the only competitor. So then you have the utility, which is the office, towing, cradle, and uh, rest mode, which fall under the utility umbrella. You have the office, which is a quiet mode, focused more in gear toward remote working, working from the car, within a car. So I suppose you're online or something, or doing something, you know, regarding your business on the computer and you're just standing still idling. Then you have the towing mode which optimizes suspension for towing. The cradle mode, no joke, you know, this assigns low frequency movements to the vehicle to soothe the baby. That is dope. That is dope, 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 dope as you can get. Then you have the resting mode which is similar to the office setting. Now this makes the uh, ride quiet and squishy. And then you have the suspension minder, the haptic and safety mode which fall under the suspension minder umbrella so i guess when haptic is talks about touch and safety mode wow then you have the haptic which driver alerts can be registered by body motions vibrations induced by the suspension amazing the safety mode which maximizes suspension stability for safe avoidance maneuvers similar to avoidance Then you have the um, expert driver. If the vehicle determines the driver to be more experienced, now it sets up the vehicle accordingly. You have the novice driver. If the vehicle determines the driver to be inexperienced, now it sets up the vehicle accordingly. Now fun to ride. Now this delivers a rough ride for a fun to ride sensation for vehicle occupants. And fun to drive. Set up the suspension aggressive on road driving. Then you have the quiet mode, which works in tandem for example, active noise cancellation to reduce road-induced noise and detect the vehicle vibrations. And then you have the vigilance boosting mode, which is similar to the haptic function that detects driver fatigue and can buzz the car via the suspension to wake you up. You imagine that you're driving down the road, you're dozing off, and the car just shakes like what? You'd be like, what the hell? <laughs> oh boy, that's awesome, folks. The Bronco just man, this is gonna be a bad SUV. So. If you didn't put your deposit down and you want to wait, because some of the stuff that's not coming yet, you know, because no one's really talking about this. And perhaps we'll find out about it come next year in the spring. Hidden features. I call them hidden gems. Now, how it all works in practice is yet to be seen. Or if it's seen even headed to the Bronco at all but if it does we can't wait to try it out for ourselves well Ford this has been leaked out and so please Ford bring this baby to the Bronco give the people what they want awesomeness the Ford Bronco folks 
What an awesome SUV. And I tell you, you're going to have an awesome time in this. Especially during now, all the things that are going on in this world. To get away and to get outdoors. To feel free and to feel alive and to feel human again. No media, no television, nothing but you and the outdoors and your Ford Bronco. You guys, it's been fantastic talking to you guys. Remember, like and subscribe and have an awesome day. And much love. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe for more interesting videos.